Clap your hands for Jesus today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And so you are great. You are great. You do. The great. The one. No one else like you.
trust me. Trust me. Then we're going to turn to Matthew, Mark, the fifth chapter. Mark, the fifth chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray with me as my two year old has her meltdown. Hallelujah. Pray for Madison. Fifth chapter, but let's sing this song. Come on and bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn to, stand to your feet if you have Mark. We're going to read a portion of Mark chapter 5, verse 7. Verse 5 and 7. Mark chapter 5, verse 7. You can get it on your phone. You can get it in the Bible. It's the New Testament. It's the second book in the New Testament. It's after Mark. It's after Matthew. Verse 5 and 7. When you get, when you have it, give me a thumbs up. Let me see who all has it. I want to get a visual. Okay, that's a good amount. Okay, the rest of y'all, I know y'all on your way. Mark 5 and 7. And cried with a loud voice and said, this is demonic force talking, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee, my God, that thou torment me not. Verse 8. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. That's what the Lord said. And he asked him, Jesus asked the spirit, what is thy name? And this is the response of the demonic spirit. He answered saying, my name is legions, for we are many. Verse 10, he besought him much. This is the spirit begging Jesus, the demon begging Jesus. He besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Amen. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. All right. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, so there was some pigs. And all the devils, so it was more than one, all the devils besought him, saying, Send us unto the swine that we may enter them. Verse 13, 
And for when Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirit, I lost my place, the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000, that's pigs, and were choked in the sea. The demons killed the herd of pigs. And we, a reference for that, John 10 and 10 says, the thief come and describing Satan. John 10 and 10 says, this about Satan. The thief comes not but to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what Satan wants to do. You can be seated in the presence of God. Now I'm going to do something that's unprecedented that I don't do often. I do often in my own Bible study, but I'm going to do read from a, a different translation just so you can get an understanding. My title today is Dealing with Demonic Forces. Dealing with Demonic Forces. This is going to be on YouTube Live and Facebook. And so we do that so that you can access it. This is designed for you to go back and study. And also, I think we're going to make the Sunday School available also because the sermon is not designed just to listen and go home, but it's to take with you and study. Okay, so I'm going to read again. You can just listen in. I'm going to read uh, Matthew, uh, Mark, fifth chapter from the Message Bible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dealing with demonic forces in the world. They arrived on the other side of the sea in the country of the Gerasenes. And Jesus got out of the boat. This is the fifth chapter. You can follow along. It's a different translation. A madman from the cemetery came up to him. He lived there among the tombs and graves. No one could restrain him. He could not be chained. He couldn't be tied down. He was possessed of devils. He had been tied upon many times with chains and ropes, but he broke the chains and snapped the ropes. No one was strong enough to tame him. Night and day, he roamed through the graves and the hills, screaming out and lashing himself and cutting himself with stones. He was cutting himself. The idea of cutting is not, it's nothing new. It's satanically influenced when teenagers and young people or whoever that are contemplating suicide to cut themselves. That's consistent with what we see here in scripture. Verse six, when he saw Jesus a long way off, he ran and bowed in worship before him. Then he yelled and howled in protest. What business do you have, Jesus, son of the most high God, messing with me? I swear to God, don't give us a hard time. Jesus had just commanded the tormenting evil spirit. Out, says the Lord. Come out of the man. He said it with authority. Verse 9. Jesus asked, tell me your name. The demon replied, my name is Legion. Or sometimes you can translate it to mob. I am, we are many. Or one translation says, we are a rioting mob. Then he desperately begged Jesus not to banish them from the country. A large herd of pigs was grazing and rooting on a nearby hill. The demons begged him, send us to the pigs, please, so we can live in them. We need something to inhabit and to embody. Jesus gave the order. But it was even worse for the pigs than for the man. In a complete craze, 
The herd of pigs stampeded over the cliff and drowned in the sea. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, but more so the doer of his word. Our topic is dealing with demonic forces. Dealing with demonic forces. In the church world today, regardless of denomination, people have come to the conclusion that we do not need to deal with demonic forces anymore. Whether you are in the Baptist church, Pentecostal Church of God in Christ, the AOE Church, Presbyterians, you will go a long way and hear sermons that don't preach against the devil. They preach against prosperity, living a happy life, making money, booing up with somebody that did, did, did <laughs> your significant other. God got your Boaz and all this stuff, sending you your husband, but you won't hear a lot of teaching. I mean, when you look on, the, don't get me wrong, when you look on the internet, there is a lot of teaching, but on the average Sunday morning sermon, this don't fill up the church. But it's in the Bible, and it's impressed upon my heart because I know that in our society today, we have a proliferation of demonic influence in our society. Just because you cannot see it, the demons physically, doesn't mean they are not among us. There are different levels of demonic influence. You have, some people use terms like demonic depression, oppression, possession. I've heard some pastors use that category. They use three categories. Suppression, oppression, uh, possession. Sometimes they add a fourth one, depression. But the highest one is possession. And I do not believe that the Christian can be completely possessed by Satan. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, if you have the Lord in your life, in other words, the devil can't completely control your life. Like for example, somebody that's on, that has a drug addiction that's completely consumed by heroin or crack, that demon will talk to you in the morning and say, wake up, go down to the UDF, wake them back for the manager to come out, knock him upside his head, spend his money, spend that money, or take his money, go down to uh, Republic, go downtown, go to Winters, get you some dough, smoke it, then go down to the, the junkyard and steal some scrap. That's how the devil talked to you. Some of y'all never been in that world. And the devil, am I right? Am I right? The devil will plan your entire day out. That's possession. You have no control. I don't believe the Christians can be in that category. But we could be in other categories where we're influenced by Satan. Influenced by anger. A spirit of anger can attach itself to you. A spirit of lust can attach itself to you. An old boo from high school will come into your life and bring a demonic force right into your home. And we have to be aware. We can say, oh, that don't happen. Oh, but it does. Amen. I like that. And this is the unique thing. Some of you don't know. When one goes into the ministry, often the Lord will give you a specific calling or a specific area of ministry. Unfortunately, my ministry is not has not been, it's empowerment to a certain extent. It is to, you know, help people get back on their feet with college and career and overcome obstacles. You know, when you get with the Lord, he can help plan your life. That's a part of it too. But the main part of my ministry is not all that popular. It, it is deliverance ministry. My very first sermon when I was a wee lad <laughs> was on deliverance and dealing with the demonic. And so some of y'all don't know that. And I've gotten away from it, and the Lord has pulled my coattail and said, you need to get back to teaching what I taught you teach, to, what I told you to teach. So y'all gonna be hearing this teaching, okay? Um, and not just hearing, but we wanna be doers of the word. So in our text today, 
And I'm out of time already. I'm running out of time. In our text today, we have a demonically possessed man. The interesting thing about this young man is he lives in the graveyard. Is that Sister uh, Mary and Bonnie back there? Is that both of y'all? Okay. <laughs> Hey Amen. I, I, I can't, when people had a mask on, I was just saying hello. <laughs> God bless you. Wave at me, wave at me. <laughs> um, when this person was no longer comfortable living in a penthouse apartment, he, he was no, com no longer comfortable living in his flat, no longer comfortable living downtown, no longer comfortable living in Green Hills or Forest Park or the neighborhood, or Fairfield, or Hamilton, or Kentucky. He lived at the graveyard. Why? Because what was inside him, what was inside him, the demonic forces, and the Bible says in King James, which is actually the more accurate translation of this, we are legions, because we are many. Legion is a thousand. This particular man had at least 1,000 demonic entities inside him. And demons do not have, spirit beings do not have to obey the laws of physics. For example, if you have 1,000 persons, they could scarcely fit in this room. This sanctuary uh, seats comfortably about 600 people, give or take. And I know from when we had larger funerals. But if you put a thousand people in here, it would be standing room only. But with demons, you can take one person, they all are comfortable in there with that person. That's their nature, they're evil, and they cause people to do evil things. Let me pause and tell a story. There was a young man, actually he taught, he shared with me yesterday, and I, and I know this young man. Before the Lord saves him, he had gotten exposed to so many things, drugs, alcohol, various sexual partners, and he really also got into music, wicked music. You know the stuff we, we uh, listen to, the people listen to today. Uh, Migos, NBA Young Boy, Future. Uh, the song that Minister Chris told me about, Murder On My Mind, A Steady Diet, of evil, he, he, he enjoyed that kind of music. Uh, we had a song by uh, Cypress Hill, If I Could Just Kill a Man. The whole song was just about killing somebody. Uh, and then we had Onyx, where their music was violent and rage and anger. And he listened to that music constantly. And uh, he had this back on the CD days. He was sharing his testimony with me. It's back during the CD days when we had CDs. They, we didn't have YouTube, and now stuff. Nowadays, we don't even have to pay for music, which is uh, affecting the artists, but it, it helps us. But in those days, you have to actually, young people, you have to actually go buy the CD. You had to go get the CD. And so some people would have a CD collection, like this particular person I'm talking about. They had a CD collection, like 400 CDs, and he lived uh, with it with his dad. His dad was a pastor. And they gave him the lower level in the basement. And he would, for hours and hours, listen to this music. And he said he did not realize how much this music influenced him. He said one day, I don't know whether they were tired of the music or what, but his parents got rid of his music. They got rid of his whole CD collection. And um, I don't know if they put it somewhere, I don't know if they threw it away, but he came home from work, he was a young adult, and went to listen to his music, and it was gone. He said, he walked, he didn't remember anything. He walked into the house and said, where are my CDs at? They said it wasn't even his voice. Where are my CDs at? What y'all do with my CDs? He said he did not remember. This is him telling me after the fact. A demonic force had entered his body. He hadn't even realized it through the music. And he was completely under the possession of Satan. He said he had no recollection. They had to tell him. And he went on to, to talk about when he was delivered. He said spirits had entered into his life. 
He spent three days praying. He grew up in the church. He knew how to pray. He spent three days. He couldn't sleep. He said every time he would try to sleep, he saw a demonic figure as big as that flag right there. A muscular figure. Because this stuff is real. That's, that's what I want y'all to understand. A muscular figure. He had chains. And every time he tried to sleep, he said, oh. and he looked over and he seen this figure. And he found out he had a stronghold. The Bible says, uh, the weapons of our warfare are, are, are not carnal, but mighty through God and the pulling down of strongholds. God can pull down strongholds. The, the good news is, he called the pastor, the saints began to pray for him, and he prayed and he broke through. And he said, it was revealed to him that it was the spirit of death that was trying to kill him. And once he, just like Jesus said, he asked, what is your name? Something about identifying what that demon is, you can pray against it. And I'm going to tell y'all how this, you know, I want to tell y'all where I'm going with this. But anyway, the, the good news is he was saved and delivered. And when he broke through, the spirit of God flooded his, his whole life. He, would be, he began to, as the Bible says, speak with other tongues as the spirit gave others. And he gave his beautiful testimony yesterday at the conference. And that was a confirmation of what I'm talking about today. We are, we have demonic forces that are alive and well today. How does this relate to us? In our home, sometimes we have allowed activity into our homes and into our life, demonic activity, that we're not aware of. The Bible says, with all I get it, get understanding. So we have to know how to pray against it. Don't let just don't let anybody be around your children. Don't bring anything into your home. Even what we watch on television. If you are consuming a diet or pornographic activity and improper activity, you are allowing that into your home. I don't want anybody to be discouraged like, wow, man, you know, I, you know, uh, I don't want you to be like, well, forget it. Uh, but we need to be aware of what Satan is doing. Let's look at the rest of the scripture and then I'm going to close out and I'm going to come back again with this. Now look at verse 3. He dwell. I'm back in the King James. He has his dwelling among the tombs. He had acquired supernatural strength. They could not bind him with chains. Hallelujah. Momentarily we're going to pray too. And I'm going, to talk, I'm going to talk to you about spiritual warfare and how to pray against it. Because a lot of times people, I know a lot of us don't understand how to do that. You can't just have general prayers now and lay me down to sleep. I pray for my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake. You are not being specific. You're not doing even what Jesus did. Jesus was very specific in our scripture. That's why I want to use this passage. Because that he had been bound, look at verse 4. He had been bound with fetters and chains. Fetters is feet shackles. He had shackles on his feet. He had shackles on his hands. Like the song says, shackles on my feet, but won't let me dance. <laughs> I just want to try to praise him, but I got shackles on my feet. This is also a metaphor for spiritual chains. In our story today, we had a man that was physically bound by chains. But it also helps us understand spiritual chains. If you have had a history of addiction, if you have a, had a, a history of having a lot of sexual partners, if you have been consumed with a lot of this demonic music out here, you have demonic influence in your life, most likely. You have to be aware of that, even as a Christian. Even when you ever did something that, that you was kind of like, where did that come from? That's the influence of Satan. You at work, and somebody just rub you the wrong way, and you just do something out of character. God can be a cuss somebody out, almost get fired. And if you have a pattern of that, I'm not talking about you. You uh, somebody cut you off in the road, and you just more angry than you usually are. You say, Lord, I need to calm down. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm talking about a pattern of anger, a pattern of lust, sexual lust, where you you putty in somebody's hand, a man, man you don't even like. It's just something comes over you and you just yield money and all this. 
That is, that's the presence of the enemy in your life. Or you are obsessed with thoughts, hateful thoughts. You might be a person that smiles all the time. You have a quiet disposition or whatever, but you just, things just burn you up. Often that's the influence of the enemy. And I'm gonna show us how to pray to be loose from that. You know, and I'm not, I don't wanna be like, oh, I'm gonna show you, but it takes time, it takes, you know. So let's, let me deal with scripture. I'm running out of time here. So he was bound in verse four. And look, King James used the word plucked. He was able, plucked is not really, don't think about plucked today, we think about like a feather. <laughs> but the King James, what they're trying to say is, he snatched them chains off of him like incredible hope. Like real chains, they wasn't no little ropes and chains, but there was some real, they were actually trying to bound him and they couldn't tame him, verse five. This part is so sad to me. Verse five really, really convicts me. He says, all night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying and cutting himself. This man was in a desperate situation. He was so, he was desperate. He wanted out. People would walk by the graveyard, hear him, oh, help me out. Just crying and he needed Jesus. This is the situation a lot of our youth are in. Maybe you in the room today have been vexed by the spirit of suicide. That is a demonic entity. Any voice or spirit that causes you or compels you to kill yourself or hurt others, that is Satan. You don't know what they did to me, man. On, on sight, it's over for them, you know, and, and that's, that's Satan. That's the influence of Satan. This man was trying to, he was, that was the spirit of suicide. He was cutting himself, and he was desperate. Somebody today is in a desperate, desperate situation. Satan uses mental illness to destroy people. I'm not saying that mental illness, all mental illness, now let me, let me, I'm gonna slow down and say this. Mental illness is different from demonic possession. When a person is actually sick or ill in their mind, it is a misteaching of the church that that is the devil out of battle. Now, Satan can bring on mental illness, depression. I'm talking real slow because I want you to get this. Schizophrenia, confusion in the mind, suicidal thoughts. That's one of his tools too. But just because a person has a bipolar disorder, we want to get away from saying that's the devil. The Bible says, I would not have you be ignorant. You know, Paul said that actually. But Satan uses, he can use your schizophrenia and bipolar to, to bring in his demonic forces. I see it all the time. Right now, when I'm teaching on this, Satan is upset. What usually happens, if I continue this topic, we will see things, man, we'll see the enemy getting upset and manifest. I've seen people cry, call, cry out and go towards the preacher, try to beat the preacher up. But the devil don't want us to teach this. I'm, I may pause next week because I got to preach on Christmas. But we're going to dig, we're going to dig because I want people to be free. I want our relatives to be free. I want our family to be free. I want young people with the spirit of transgenderism to be delivered. The reason why people feel like this is the way I am is because there, there is some possession often involved and that's all they can think of. There's a spirit that's making them feel like a woman or a spirit that's making them feel like a man. A lot of times these young people that are uh, 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 transgender, they're more feminine than, than, the, than the girl because it's a counterfeit spirit. And these individuals have straightened their hair and they have nails and we don't make fun of them. The old church made fun of them. They're crying out, verse 5. They're crying out. They, a lot of times they don't want to be like this, but this is all I know. This is how I feel. 
Just like young ladies I grew up with that had been sexually molested, they were involved with sex at 12 and 13 years old and 14 years old, they don't even know why they feel like that. Because a demonic spirit has entered into those young people. And the people do not know how to deal with it. They take counseling, medication, but the Bible says, he that has ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In other words, we need to know how to deal with things spiritually. And most people in society, even pastors, they don't understand this teaching. They don't know how to deal with the demonic. So momentarily, I'm going to give myself time. We're going to pray specifically. And Minister, Minister Freeland and I, we talk about this topic all the time, but I'm just making it public. <laughs> Um, verse 6 look at verse 6 this is a, another peculiar verse but when he saw Jesus that's the, the man with the demon that's the he when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshipped him isn't that interesting sometimes the devil will perform just so he don't get cast out this is why this is going to be controversial this is why a lot of choir directors are homosexuals because they think, well, let me say that backwards. A lot of, a lot of uh, choir directors do not get delivered from homosexuality because they think through their singing and performance and shouting that that justifies them. The Lord comes to save everyone, the alcoholic, the person that has a crystal meth addiction. And I pray right now for those that have an addiction in the name of Jesus that they will be loosed. We pray against that spirit of crack addiction. We pray against that spirit of crystal meth addiction. We bind you, spirit in Jesus' name. And we cast it out today. That spirit of heroin, the residue of sin, the remaining demonic spirit. You might be saved, but there's still something there. You know, the Lord can take the craving out of your mouth. Lord, take the craving. Out of those shanda, take the craving out of your mouth in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I was in the world, and I forgot my thought, I'll just say this. I was going to say something, but I'll just say this. When I was in the world, most of you may not realize that I was involved with gang activity. And I never named the, named the gang anymore that I was used to affiliated with because if there's people that are gang related, they'll perk up. And that demon in them, if, if it's a crib, they'll automatically be upset with me if I used to be a blood. If it's a blood, they'll automatically be upset with me. And that will evoke a spirit, that spirit of violence in them. So I don't, I never named what gang I was affiliated with. We had a gang funeral here recently one time. And I looked out and I see a oh, sea of red. One of their, their, their homeboys had been killed at 16 years old. And they had a gang meeting in the parking lot. And I knew what was going on because I used to be in that stuff. I could, in fact, I'm going to be honest, I could feel that spirit. I don't know the name of it. I don't know if it's a violent demon or murder. But I, I, can, I, can, I, I can discern. I'm going to use a biblical word. I can discern the spirit of gang activity in the room because I used to be involved with it. It's a certain spirit, I, I can sense it. Uh, at any rate, I used to be involved in that. And so when I got saved, I still had those spirits trying to attach themselves to me. They didn't possess me. But the Bible says when an unclean spirit is cast out, he comes back and finds that, that soul cleansed out. I'm just putting my own words. And they bring seven more devils that's more wicked than himself, and they try to inhabit. So I remember distinctly, when I became a Christian, there were still things that I, I call it the residue of sin. There were still those spirits that try to violence, sexual promiscuity, pornography, drug use, alcohol, all those things that me and I, my friends used to do when we were out in the world. The Lord had to cleanse me of that. And I'm going to uh, close my, my Bible, so to speak, and begin to talk about prayer. Okay? I'm going to just get into the prayer piece. 
This is important. We're going to come back Thursday, too. Lord, say the same, and we're going to do some deliverance work. We're going to, Thursday is an informal setting. And I want to say to you, and the Lord is going to, I believe the Lord is going to honor what I say. If you are struggling with some kind of addiction, if you, I'm going to be specific. If you are struggling with sexual immorality, if you have thoughts of homosexuality and lesbianism in your life, if you are like me, I used to drink, but the Lord has delivered me. But sometimes, this is not the case for me, but sometimes the devil will bring that back towards you because alcohol is like an old friend. That you and only people that used to drink, only people that drink understand this. <laughs> it's your companion. You said that whatever your drink is, Tangeray, you know, whatever. Alize, I can't even remember the drinks no more. 40 ounce, we used to drink 40s back in the 90s. You set that thing right by you, you put your movie on, you sip all day. It's a friend. All day. It becomes your lifestyle. And the devil will ease that thing right back in your life. I'm helping somebody, I already know. He'll ease that thing right back. I'll just take a little sip. You need to unwind it when you're stressed. And if, 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 if that's you, or you are a full-blown in addiction, and you, you, you might take three or four months off, and the devil bring that thing back to you, come Thursday. We're going to come specifically with deliverance in mind. Who are the teenagers? You, you, you young people, I would say 30 and younger, you have a tough battle in the 21st century. You have a very tough battle. And you don't have to hide anything at any of them. We're not perfect here. Don't come here thinking, because the Lord has done a lot of work on me. You looking at the end product. Don't come here and say, Pastor, he's just on that stage. He perfect, he got his family. The Lord has brought me from a mighty long way. You could not have trusted me back in the day. And I was a smart thief. I would outsmart people. <laughs> I wasn't smart enough not to go to jail. No. <laughs> they got me. <laughs> but I would watch people. I would watch where you put your purse at. I would watch where, oh, he put his, he, he always puts his wallet right there. And I was patient, Sister Dukes. I wait six months. Just when you trusted me. And I, 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 I put, I'm just being honest. And I, I had to, no, don't do what I do. I'm just, I'm really giving too many details, but uh, I put things out of people's line of sight. Like, you see that right there? I would distract you. Like, look at that painting right there. Everybody look at that painting over there. And that thing gone, look at it. <laughs> That's the, the devil would give me those ideas. So if you want to be actually delivered, you want to go to the next level, Maybe there's anger or dishonesty like I was just talking about in your heart. I want to come on Thursday and we want to just spend some time. And it's not a one and done. We're gonna, we're gonna go through a deliverance process. That's what we wanna do. I want you to have the victory. Because I believe in holiness. I mean, holiness is not perfection, but holiness is being like Jesus and walking in a way with integrity. <laughs> We are different from the world. And, and, and I already know, a lot of you have never heard this teaching before. They don't want, they don't want you to hear this kind of teaching. <laughs> the devil don't want you to hear this kind of teaching. Then a lot of times, the pastors, and I'm going to be honest, the pastors are crooked. They don't, they're not living nothing themselves, so how are they going to teach it? <laughs> and I'm a pastor in the city. I, I'm a part of pastoral groups, and the guys I'm around there, some of them ain't no good. They run women, they're stone alcoholics. And we, we should be better than that as Christians. Amen, y'all agree with that? Clap your hands if you agree with that. Amen, what I'm gonna do, we're already in overtime. Stand to your feet. I'm gonna do an opening prayer for our, 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 our listening audience. Then I'm gonna turn the recording off. And I'm going to take another five minutes and, and get into some spiritual warfare. Lord, we pray right now that you would confirm your word. Verse 5 haunts me. I see the young people crying out. I see people in here. I can feel your spirit. You've been crying out 
to the Lord. You're stuck. You've been hurt as a child. You've been treated like a piece of trash as a child. It's the feeling that nobody cares about you. But Jesus cares about you. Jesus cares about you. You've been a throwaway girl. You've been a young man that everybody has forgotten. But the Lord has not forgotten about you. And I hear your spirit crying out. You're desperate. Cutting is an attention getter. Cutting is so I can feel something. I can feel alive or something. People cut when they're contemplating suicide. And the lie of suicide is that nobody cares. What's the point of living? If I die, nobody will care. That's the biggest, fattest, satanic lie that's there, out there. Because God made you special. He has a purpose for your life. He has something, young lady, for you to do. Young man, God has called you. You are purpose driven. You are here for a purpose. And you are unique. And you belong here. In the name of Jesus. So, Lord, confirm your word. We call out the demonic forces in the family, in the home. There may be somebody here that's not saved, and Satan is controlling their life. Hallelujah. We pray, Lord, save me. Forgive me for all my sins. I believe this is your prayer of salvation. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And he didn't just stay on that cross. He rose again on the third day. I believe that in my heart, Lord, and I ask that you forgive me, and not only that, I receive you into my life. Say that with me. I receive you, Jesus, in my life. And I, know, I know we're already Christians and everything, so most of us, but just you can say it with me. It ain't no hard. All right, now this time, read it. Jesus, I receive you into my life. Now what I want you to do, especially if you're not saved, if you weren't saved, I want you to feel the Holy Spirit enter into your life. That's what's gonna happen when you say, Jesus, 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 I receive you to my life. Amen, if that's your prayer, come on and clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands. God bless you, saints.